All right, everyone, I'm actually late to this story because even though I think some people were tipping me off to it, for some reason I just didn't see it on time. So this actually happened several days ago, and I'm just barely reporting on it. Uh, Matt and Blonde did a thing on it last night, which is pretty funny. Uh, we got to talk about Hassan Piker from the Young Turks, of course, and Dan Crenshaw and a Twitch ban. Uh, because it falls right into the free speech thing. Now, first, some people, uh, like, they jumped down my throat on Twitter the other night, and they're like, well, what Hassan Piker said was beyond the pale, and he should should be banned for it. No, he shouldn't. He, all he's saying, for, for those of you, you know, who are like me, apparently, and were living under a rock on the issue and didn't realize what had happened, uh, Dan Crenshaw and Hassan Piker, I guess, got into it, like, through Twitter and shit. And uh, on Twitch, I guess, Hassan Piker had said that the America deserved 9-11 and then said shit about Crenshaw and then Crenshaw fired back. And then Hassan Piker got a temporary ban on Twitter. Crenshaw didn't. And what I pointed out first and foremost is here you have an example of exactly the kind of tech policies that make this kind of debate problematic. Because here you've got Crenshaw and Piker insulting one another. This is the reason for Piker being banned. But Hassan Piker, even though he is sort of a public figure, he's working with the Young Turks, he's a reasonably well-known dude, he's not a public official. Crenshaw is. So Crenshaw doesn't get banned for saying exactly the same things that Hassan Piker is saying. This also corroborates exactly what I said would eventually happen, which was that the hammer would fall on people on the left who were part of independent content creation. Piker's part of the Young Turks, but he's, I think he's got his own thing going on as well. He is his own figure. We've seen this before, like a lot of the the, uh, the commentators that were spawned by like rebel media after having left there. They leave a corporate group, they become independent, they become more well-known than they ever were before. It wouldn't be surprising if he finds his own venture someday. And I'm by no means, by the way, defending Hassan Piker, uh, his comments or his beliefs. He's a leftist. He's working for the Young Turks. I, I think that that, uh, <laughs> that ship cannot sail as far as me defending him on an ideological basis. But I am going to oppose any censorship of them. That's the other thing that I pointed out was that censorship by multinational, multi-billion dollar corporations is far worse than anything Hassan Piker can say. It's far bigger than just the Young Turks. The Young Turks are Jank Juger, Buffalo Man himself, spawning AOC, then getting kicked to the curb as soon as it happens, and apparently being dismayed by his own fucking project. The Young, Tur <laughs> the young Turks are not an effectual voice for change. There would be neoliberal group that has a little bit of a backseat at the table, and that's pretty much all they get. As far as their independent commentators, they're totally expendable to these people. Oh, but they've got millions of dollars in their budget. Oh, but I'm not talking about millions of dollars. We're talking about multi-billions. But what exactly did he say that every edgy fucking kid in the 2000s didn't say anyway? Every edgy 2000s, look, I was a liberal in the mid-2000s. I considered myself a Democrat marginally at the time. We're talking lead up to the Obama era. We're talking the Bush era. Every goddamn fucking liberal on the internet and elsewhere said shit like this. It was considered funny specifically because it's edgy. And that was a lot closer to 9-11 than now. I am not going to sit there and pretend a virtue signal and grandstand say, oh, I'm so offended by his comments saying that America deserved 9-11. That is a bannable offense because it makes me sad. No, no, it doesn't. I don't give a fuck. And some people are like, well, I saw the towers fall. So, yeah, I agree that you should be banned. Well, that's exactly the wrong way to look at it. You're, you're looking at it from an ideological stance. I am kind of, too. I'm looking at the situation. I'm saying, do I think that a billion-dollar corporation, Twitch, should be banning individual users, even though it's a temporary ban, I think like a week-long ban, um, for getting into it with a, a sitting representative? No. So that part goes out the window. I think that's, you know, stupid. Uh, for, for telling a, a arguably bad joke that you would have heard throughout the 2000s anyway, I don't give a fuck. Who fucking cares? Look, here's the thing. If you're offended by it, some, a couple people said this, well, you're defending the indefensible, and it's, it's offensive and wrong, and you should be banned. If you're offended, argue against it. That's the whole point of the internet. The reason the internet was such a great place to be originally and continues to be is because if someone says something fucking stupid, you can argue with them for that. I want Hassan Piker to speak as much as possible so that people more intelligent than him can rebut him. But people, and, and I understand uh, some people have said this too. Well, he thinks that people should be censored. I'm like, maybe so. Because he's looking at it from the money angle. The Young Turks compete with independent content creators, um, you know, like YouTubers, uh, Switch streamers, and shit like that. 
Those of us with truly independent platforms are their competitors. Of course, they want to get us censored. But I don't play that game because I, I mean, most of my income is coming from books. I don't have to play that game. What I'm saying is that I believe ideologically in free speech. I have perhaps a slightly naive belief, admittedly at times, that good ideas tend to rise to the top. Bad ideas tend to die out over time. Um, where that's not the case and there's a paradigm shift, I sort of sit back and I'm, I'm academically detached. I'm interested in watching where culture meanders. It's like now, the other day, you've got CNN saying, well, Trump could end up being worse than Hitler or Stalin. He could be responsible for more deaths than any of the other great evildoers of the last century. The hyperbole, the sheer wall of bullshit that's coming from these outlets is hilarious. And this is all their way of prefacing a desire for censorship. But it's all about money. They don't want to censor people because they're worried about Trump fans becoming the next brown shirts. They don't worry about that. They know that that's bullshit. That's just their selling point. What they're really worried about is the New York Times going belly up or, or the Wall Street Journal going belly up or CNN stopping existing because of people like me. So, no, I don't want to enable the tech firms to censor anyone. Yes, that includes us on Piker. I don't care if, he, if he's a far leftist. I don't care if he says weird shit. Look, is that any different from the edgy humor that you, that you voluntarily choose to peruse online anyway? There's all sorts of edgy shit. And if you don't like it, you can go elsewhere. If you don't like what Hassan Piker has to say, and most of these people saying, well, I agree with him being banned. You weren't there watching him stream. If it weren't for the legacy media reporting on it, you never would have known about his comments in the first place. You're detached from that situation. Why are you so offended? You did, you're not sitting, you don't have to live with him. You don't have to, you, you're not forced to watch his Twitch stream. You're not forced to go onto his Twitter and see the weird, incoherent bullshit he says. And Crenshaw sitting there talking about, well, the Young Turks peddle all sorts of things and YouTube basically endorses them. I will agree with the point of YouTube endorsing the Young Turks being problematic. Because I don't think YouTube should endorse anybody. I don't think that it should disincentivize or incentivize any form of user behavior that is otherwise legal. I look at it as same. It's a, just like affirmative action. It's like the, the simplistic metaphor that I've given. I'll give this for people seeing this for the first time. The metaphor is this. I have a bakery and I sell two kinds of bread. I incentivize one of the loaves of bread by saying, wow, this bread is so great. I highly endorse it. It's wonderful. And I have signs of this beautiful loaf of bread over here. I am not attacking, insulting, disincentivizing, or demoting in any way its competitor, the other loaf of bread. I'm not doing anything to it, but I am. I'm disincentivizing people from using it because I'm puffing up the other brand. It's as simple as that. YouTube has been doing this all the time. It does this for ideology. It does this for individual users. It tends to prefer users that are corporatized, that aren't organically native YouTube stock, it tends to prefer the Will Smiths and the Katy Perrys, people to get forced down the throat of the Y7 culture, the, the vapid celebrities who tell a fart joke and they think it's edgy. You know, people like that. The Jimmy Kimmels of the world. Goofballs and sellouts. That's what YouTube fronts. I have a problem with that, but as far as uh, Saw and Piker saying weird shit, no, I think he should be able to say far worse than that. I don't care if he sits there and, and has an hour-long praise Osama session. I really don't give a fuck because that stuff has been on the internet anyway. And over that period of time that it's been on the internet, there was no problem. Not until recently with the Russia bullshit and the We Need Censorship movement. Until then, it never existed as a problem. And it still isn't a problem. It's portrayed as one in order to destroy independent content creation, to destroy the lives and livelihood through defamation and del deliberate attacks of people like me. That's what it boils down to. I'll be reporting separately on the New York Times bullshit, them whining like little fucking titty babies about the fact that people are taking journalistic methodology and applying it to the New York Times. Oh, you're not supposed to do it to us. You're not supposed to archive the social media posts of journalists working for us. That's mean and bad, and we have to scrub our Twitters, and we have to watch what we say. We have to be held to the same standards, the same censorious bullcrap standards we try to hold everyone else to. Like when that little old lady got called a Russian agent or that time they doxed a kid for making a GIF image. Oh my goodness, oh my god, exactly. Fucking hypocrites, fucking corporate sellouts. So no, I'm not going to defend Twitch for banning Hassan Piker. No, yeah, I stay, I guess I stand with Hassan on this one. It's hilarious. I, yeah, and I, I, the worst part is this. I did see the day coming when I would have to do this. I did see the day when someone who supposedly is like a MAGA populist like Dan Crenshaw 
would be arguing for censorship because it's convenient for him situationally. I don't care if he looks like uh, like a, a spy or something like that. Crenshaw can look as cool as he wants to. He's also only capable of seeing in two dimensions. I would think that'd be a problem. But I think that most people in the House and Senate have that problem, so he's, he's in good company. No, I guess I have to stand with a, a person working for the Young Turks, <laughs> of all things. <laughs> I have to stand with the Young Turks employee because the fucking tech uh, uh, issue has gotten so out of hand, because the tech firms have gotten so bad, they're, they're worse now than the far left. The far left was the big boogeyman for years. I had to harangue and say weird shit and punch people and do crazy things. Now, no, the tech firms like that, like the corporate oligarchs are worse because they've taken that far left. They took its energy and vampirized it and sort of left it raped in the corner. And now they're sitting there. Now they're empowered because the left has actually given them the power to censor uh, the right. And now it's being aimed at the independent left. And now people like Piker or, or Kalinsky, now all of a sudden they have a problem with it. Thankfully, what we just witnessed is the beginning of the end of that censorious paradigm. Unfortunately, how it might end is government interventionism, which means we'll need to build an entirely separate pay-as-you-go style, serious style internet, which is exactly what Zuckerberg is planning to do. That's why he's launching satellites every other fucking day. Um, yeah, the big tech firms want to control the next internet, too. They'll say, oh, yeah, we built a second internet. You can be edgy here. And then 10 years later, the same fucking shit will happen. By then, they'll have some government interventionism to prevent anyone else from launching their own satellites to make a third internet to save us from that censorship. Watch what will happen. So, yeah, I'm not black-pilled on the issue. There, somehow, somebody will invent an alternative that will actually work. And unfortunately, each alternative in step gets corrupted. It's the way of humanity. We corrupt everything that we create because what happens is it becomes it – becomes, it's novel at first. And people say, wow, it's so cool, and they start using it. And then it grows. And then the lame stream comes in and they start destroying everything that the original gangsters created. And then they sanitize it and make it normal. And they start waging wars on cyberbullying or terrorism online, extremism. Our fanatic funneling network bullshit that doesn't even exist. And a bunch of eggheads sit there making their you know, dumbass studies about it. Somebody for, uh, sent me a link. I was going to make a video on it. But it's dated. It's from last year. And claiming that I that I'm all light uh, and putting me as part of a, a literal like academic study from some university in Brazil, claiming that there's a pipeline from less you know extreme content to the severest elements of the alt right on YouTube and like st shit like that. If you look it up, it's a, it's a bunch of Brazilian academics. So <laughs> I thought that was hysterical when I first read that. Yeah. So I'm all light. Um, apparently fairly influential. It's a little bit like the Becca Lewis Data Society hit piece defamation from two years ago. That's about all. Peace out.